Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lays it down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget fine. You can take or leave me, but you ain't got much time. Cause I just keep on rolling down the line. Hey, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile with another drop sale video for tonight's Shop Hop. If you are watching this video as it becomes available, you are most of the way through a late afternoon, early evening of drop sales, which are being hosted by Beth at Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. Uh, when you finish my video at, uh, when mine is done at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, you can hop over to Vintage Vinny. He is the next video that comes up and there will still be a couple of videos after him. But if you are don't know what I'm talking about, you can go in the description of this video. You'll see links to all of the videos, even those that ran earlier. You can hop onto those channels. And even if you missed the video when it became available, you can still catch hopefully catch some items that might still be available to purchase. If you are unfamiliar with the drop sale format, uh, again, this is a pre-recorded video that are scheduled to run every 30 minutes. And so there is no offer ups, there's no live chat. You will be claiming items in the comments section of this video. And I encourage you to do so as you find the items that are available. Don't wait till the end and give me one comment of everything because you might miss out on some of the items that were announced earlier in the video. And you'll see additional information on how to claim items in the description of this video itself. Uh, just keep in mind all of the prices that I'm giving every, this is the $5 ephemera sale. That $5 does not include shipping. So I will be adding shipping costs uh, for all these items. So I need to know where you're at. So you'll send me an email to the email address that's on the screen and I will send you an invoice. Once you pay the invoice, I will ship you your items. So getting this started out for the first uh, $5 ephemera item, we have a vintage butter box. So this is fancy print butter from Putney, Vermont. Now I am based in Chicago, so the entire state of Wisconsin is judging me right now, but they do that anyway, uh, because I am promoting another state's dairy product. But it is a super cool box. It has been flattened, it's new old stock. And I actually have multiple of these available. So this is a case that if more than one person sees this video and wants them, I have a total of four that you can have. Uh, it will be shipped to you flat, but you can open it up should you choose to so that it would be a great item uh, on a display shelf. Or think how cool this would be if you gave this as a gift using this as the gift box to put something else inside. But you can receive one of these fancy print butter boxes from Putney, Vermont by giving me uh, for $5 by giving me number 97 in the comments. Uh, next item is a series of postcards. Uh, which I have available. They're, they are being sold individually. And what these postcards are, are some fantastic images from early uh, 20th century. So these are all from early 1900s. If you look on the back of them, you can actually see that the uh, back is called undivided. It wasn't until 1907 that the back of a postcard got divided. So the fact that this has a single uh, back uh, predates it to that. Now these are French, so they're calling it carte postale. Uh, sometimes you can date them further because it wasn't until 1901 that the term postcard got used, but that was in the United States. So we just have a very early 1900s uh, card. So we have a uh, uh, lady holding an urn, beautiful black and white imagery. There is some text on here, I am assuming from the photographer or something about the studio, although this is the same woman that shows up on multiple cards, uh, but they have different names on the bottom. And you can also see there's a number. Uh, so each of these cards are sold individually. They are $5 each, and I will give you a letter for each of them. But I just wanna show you what the uh, images look like. And there's one of them that is somewhat risque. Uh, so I'm going to cover her bottom portion. She's not wearing anything on the bottom, but she's posed in such a way that nothing is exposed. Uh, but I don't want to have any issues with YouTube on that one. So these are, there are four of them available. Again, they're sold separately. They're all carte postale. They're, none of them are posted. This is simply the image. So the first one is the standing uh, with the urn. You can have her by giving me letter S. Uh, the one that uh, could be considered risque, uh, ranging my card so I can cover her up again. Uh, you can get her by giving me letter C. There's an individual one with the lady with the harp, and you can have her by giving me letter P. 
And there's another one that again, has a different name uh, printed across her dress. Uh, but I believe it is the same woman uh, with a long train and you can have her by giving me letter W. So again, those are $5 each uh, by giving me the appropriate letter. Uh, next item is a trade, uh, it's kind of a trade card, but this one's a little bit different. It is a Victorian trade card for Daniel Petrie's Restaurant. This is in York, Pennsylvania. Some great illustrations on this one. And on the back, there's something a little bit different. So instead of a full illustration or sometimes picture, you've got all the information for the restaurant on one side, and then kind of a little poem on the back using a poker uh, suits. So don't tell me you own a diamond or say, put it down in the slate. Although I have a good heart, my brewer is not willing to wait. There is always a man with a spade ready to dig my grave if I, and unfortunately there's a little bit of damage there. So I'm not sure if, if I what, if I bust. So behind the bar, I keep a big club for all those who ask me for trust. So that's just a fun little uh, twist on a Victorian trade card. And you can have this trade card by giving me the number two in the comment section. All right, where are my teachers? We've got some great uh, gifts uh, for yourself or for someone who you know is a teacher. The end of the school year is coming up. So the first one is, I think it's a little snarky. It's another postcard. Uh, so again, it's an undivided back postcard. So it makes it a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, this uh, postage, the uh, cancel mark is not fully legible. So it doesn't have, it was at 4 p.m. But beyond that, you can't really see what it says. It does appear it wasn't sent until 1920. So it's possible it's an older card that was sent later or that date could be nothing related to this at all. However, we have it at the top, we missed you. And this is one of the most passive aggressive uh, cards that would be sent by a teacher. And this one particularly, I think is a Sunday school teacher. Many little boys and girls were in our school today, but can you tell me why Carl Hansen was far, far away? Hope to see you next Sunday, sure. Mrs. J.J. Hallowell. Okay, Mrs. Hallowell, mind your own business. We slept in. But anyway, uh, so I believe this is uh, for Sunday school. Um, I just because it said, hope to see you next Sunday. Uh, so I'm assuming this was something. But I do find it fascinating that the Sunday school would be sending postage. And there was a stamp put on this. So like money was spent to church shame you for not sending uh, Carl Hansen to Sunday school that day. So you get the We Missed You Sunday school passive aggressive uh, Sunday school card uh, for $5 by giving me number 74. 74, five bucks gets you the We Missed You Sunday school card. Uh, also another item for teachers. This is just a fun little item that I picked up that I just think would look fantastic sitting on a shelf. Uh, you know, maybe on a desk. It is a it is a, a vintage, or actually, I believe this one is actually an antique um, report card. And you actually see right there at the top, it's September seventh, eighteen ninety seven. So this was for Paul Cousins, maybe uh, for the seventh grade for the term beginning September seventh, eighteen ninety seven. And you can see with his the studies of all of his grades. And then the times tardy, half days absent, whole days absent, and deportment. Now, he did not get any scores for deportment, although he did miss 16 days in uh, the first uh, first term. Um, but pretty good student. You know, averages 98, 98, 98. Uh, you know, a couple things got the hundreds. So this was this was a pretty strong A student. And uh, E. Rabbis, I'm assuming that would be the parent. Or no, that's the teacher. Um signed for the reason not for the fourth quarter and then the parent a uh, very consistent signature by the parent if i signed my name five times across a year my name would never look the same look that similar uh and then on the back side it just is it's unfortunately it was left blank um because i guess this would be something that you did if you moved because it says it's a transfer certificate so this one's blank uh it looks like it was out of buffalo so I don't think I noticed that on the other side. So it must be the Buffalo school system, I'm assuming Buffalo, New York. But I just think this is a fun piece. I love I love things from the 19th century. So an 1897 report card, get it for five bucks by giving me number four. Uh, speaking of things that are older, these were also falling into antiques. And I think a couple of, I think at least one of these does fall into uh, 1900s. I have a set, a series of canceled checks. 
Now I've been offering checks in the past and I have an Instagram, been doing some Instagram videos, 90 seconds of vintage. If you follow me on Instagram, be sure to catch those because I'll always pop some stuff into those. Um, these are checks that I've not offered before. So some of them are the same banks, but I'm not trying to compete one against the other. So just keep that in mind. Uh, all of these will be $5. The oldest one is marked 1900. You can see the print originally was for the 1890s. Uh, but this one didn't get used until 1900. Unfortunately, it is the oldest in the set, so it has a little bit of uh, wear to it. All of them were uh, put on a spike, and so this one got torn when, you know, those receipt spikes that we sell, and you can now use them to display uh, Christmas tree tropper, toppers, my tip to you. Um, but anyway, they will cause damage, leaves damage to the checks, but there's some beautiful uh, printing on this, some great penmanship, and a fantastic signature on the back. So that one you can get by giving me letter Q. The next one, I don't know if I have these in order by date. The next one's out of New York. That one was out of Holidaysburg, Pennsylvania. I think I actually have some others from Holidaysburg. So I'll show another Holidaysburg one. This is from 1894. So we are also getting into the 19th century. So this one's got the 1894 Gardner, Morrow and Company Bankers. Uh, Holidaysburg, Pennsylvania. You can see it there off to the side. Again, some great uh, penmanship on this one, some beautiful printing. And this one has some fantastic writing and some mechanical uh, stamps all across the back. Uh, so this one, again, also $5. You get that one by giving me letter A in the comments. Uh, another Holidaysburg. Wait a minute, was that Holidaysburg? Yeah, that was okay, a lot of Holidaysburg. I didn't realize it. Uh, so this is a Holidaysburg, uh, the Citizens National Bank. So this was from 1913. So you've got Holidaysburg there off to the side, great penmanship, a mechanical stamp that's canceling it. I'll, uh, I'm assuming that's 1913, although it looks like 1918. And then a whole slew of penmanship and mechanical stamps on the back. And you can get that Citizens National Bank check by giving me letter D. And then the last one is actually out of New York City. This is the Fifth Avenue Bank, dated 1905, November 27th, 1905. Check number 1084. It was for um, $59.73, signed by Emma. Uh, does still have, this one actually has kind of a cool cancellation. You can see it's like a little plus sign that's been stamped into it. Um, Actually, this one doesn't look like it had a spike other than those, that little, that little, it's very, it's a perfect, I don't know if you can see it, I can see it, there you kind of see it, perfect little plus sign, I've never seen that before, uh, and then it does have mechanical stamp on the back, you can have this one by giving me letter X, so those are all of my canceled, um, my canceled checks. I also have, I showed kind of the trade card with the post, with the poker stuff on it. These are some trade cards. It's a little bit different style of trade card. They're a little bit lighter weight. So I'm actually going to group these together. So you're getting the set of three of these will be $5. And they are Luke, L-U-C, biscuits. Uh, but they're images of, I'm assuming these are all international locations. But on the back, so your location first. But on the back, you have a description. So this is Grand, okay. This is Grand Place from Brussels, Belgium. And so I can see the French spelling of Brussels, B-R-U-X-E-L-L-E-S, Hotel de Ville, so that's a city hall on the Grand Place. Uh, so it's all in, the, unfortunately, the description is all in French. So if you don't read French, it's not gonna tell you a lot, but they're still promotional pieces for Luc Biscuits, Biscottis. Uh, P-A-I-N-D-S-P, -P okay, I'm not even gonna try and slaughter that. Uh, so anyway, so, but they're lighter weight. So most Victorian trade cards are more of a, a more solid stock, more like a, almost like a, a postcard kind of weight because these are so thin. I'm again, grouping the three of these together. It looks like they were part of a series um, because this one uh, was number two, this one from Stockholm is number five, and this one from Athens is number four. So I don't have a complete series. I don't know how big the series was, but you can get all three of these uh, four or $5 
by giving me letter 49. All right, I also have uh, some additional postcards. So these are the postcards that um, they're the postcard folders. So all of these are unused. So none of these have postmarks, but they're all the same concept. When you open them up, which I should have done before I started recording the video, little flap uh, opens up. This one happens to be for Cape Cod. And when you open it up, it's not giving you, sometimes they're postcards that come out. These are photograph portfolios. These are photographs both front and back uh, showing images from whatever the topic is. So again, this is Cape Cod. Looks like there's a little poem about Cape Cod on the bottom and then images of Cape Cod uh, going all the way through. And the this one, this folder, the uh, has a linen finish to the folder itself. So this is $5. I have several of these. So I'm gonna, again, give each one a separate letter. So the Cape Cod one, you get, I'm going to, I just randomly picked this F. So the fish for Cape Cod, you get F to get the Cape Cod. If you would like the Chicago one, let me open up the Chicago one. So same thing. There's a linen finish to the uh, folder. And then the pictures also have a linen finish to them as well. Again, none of these are postmarked. So you get the Chicago one by giving me letter M. If you would like Rockefeller Center from New York City, also with a linen finish on the um, folder, but the pictures themselves do not have a linen finish, they're regular paper, but some beautiful illustrations of the interior of Rockefeller Center, the skating, ice skating rink, uh, all of Rockefeller Center. You can have that portfolio of postcard photos by giving me letter H. And if you would like, I've, only got, I've got two more. Uh, we have this one. I actually didn't figure out what this one was. This is Highway US 40, the Victory Highway, the great transcontinental route through America's grandest mountains. Okay, I'll bite. What are America's grandest mountains? Well, it involves Utah because we've got Utah State Capitol. The Great, the Green River, Burtowned Pass, and Mount Whiteley near Muddy Pass. Okay, I'm gonna fail this geography test. Uh, I know where Utah is, so let's see. So we've got the state capital of uh, in Denver. So yeah, we must be going through the Rockies. Uh, I've never seen one like that. That actually has kind of a double image on it across two photographs. Uh, let's see, this is markers at the summit of Berthoud Pass. So some great nature photography, mountains of Western United States. You can have Highway US 40 by giving me letter U. And the final one drifts into Canada. We've got a postal card uh, portfolio of for Vancouver. And this one does not have a linen finish on the folder, nor does it have linen finish on the photographs, uh, but some great photography of Vancouver, a place I've always wanted to go. Haven't made it, haven't made it to Vancouver yet. Uh, some beautiful scenery uh, heading all the way to the West Coast. So if you're looking for the Vancouver portfolio, you get that by giving me letter Y. The next item I have, I've not actually, I don't think I've ever actually had this specific type before. What I've had are lipstick tissues. This one is slightly larger. This is actually lens tissue. So it's a Ross optical lens tissue. Will not scratch or lint. Effectively removes all grease from polished lens. It's a little folder that you would have received from your optician. So it's a great little advertising piece. And in it are still the tissues that you would be able to use probably still today to clean off your glasses. I love these little industrial pieces. They look great and, eph and ephemeral. They look great adding to vignettes, uh, any sort of industrial uh, display that you might have. Uh, great little kind of a, like kind of like a heavy waxed paper type uh, outer with some great uh, promotional advertising for the lens tissues. You can get those by giving me $5 by giving me letter 70. Another great advertising piece. I've never seen anything like this before. 
Um, they're called Trilby Films. And the concept behind this is it's kind of like a film strip. And you have this little story that takes place. You, you see, we got act two. And you go all the way to the bottom. But it's not a promotional piece for the for film. So it says Trilby Films. But Trilby is a polish. So the moral is pinch Trilby and shine. Passed by the Board of Common Sense with commendation. Trilby comes in the famous pinch box, is the best and cleanest polish, and costs the same as common polish. Ten cents. Ask your dealer. He sells it. There's nothing on the back. So again, just as a piece of industrial advertising, it's, it's you know, you've got Johnny, mother, can I go to the party? Uh, now I'm dressed. And so it's all about him making sure he's dressed well and polishing his shoes. So... It's kind of a film strip, but just a different concept of from sorrow to joy in two acts, Trilby Films, but it's not films, it's polish. So I just thought that was kind of fun. I don't know if this style of advertising was also done for other products, but uh, kind of a fun little item. It's five bucks, and you get that by giving me number one. Another kind of a different type of advertising. It's an advertising piece from World War II. Uh, and it is from Shell, so you know, right on there, so it's promoting Shell, Shell for the age of flight. But it's a little bit different in the sense it's not kind of, it's not really promoting Shell's products. It's civilian wings for everyone. And what it is, is it's talking about uh, basically being able to fly a plane. And there's an insert in here. There is a little bit, just to be aware, the cover, it's still attached, but barely. Um, there is a little insert that's been attached to the third page and it says notice. Since this pamphlet was printed, this is, and the notice is dated 1947, so after the war. Since this pamphlet was printed, certain revisions in civil air regulations have been made, which call for the following changes in the pamphlet. And one of them is on page 16, the section entitled pilot certificate should now read, no person should pilot a civil aircraft unless he holds a pi valid pilot li pilot certificate. I'm sorry, that's new. <laughs> so during the war, you could fly a plane. It didn't have, didn't have to have a certificate. Um, but it goes into, you know, uh, what personal flying is, this, uh, how to become a qualified pilot. So indirectly, it's promoting Shell because, you know, you're going to use shell, shell oil and Shell gas to, you know, make the plane fly. But it talks about airspace restrictions, uh, what to learn in the airplane, how to read maps. There was a kind of description about like the airflow over the wings, uh, how the different map trends are put in there. So it's just kind of covering more than just a promotional piece for Shell. It's just from Shell, but it's kind of cool for airplane lovers because it is unique to war era. Uh, Cause I think it originally was dated, it was originally copyright 1945. So toward the end of the war, um, but personal airplane uh, brochure, five bucks by giving me number 69. And then I had another kind of a unique, uh, I was at an estate sale and I was finding all kinds of books. And so I'm relisting those. I found a bunch of Broadway programs. Those, those went on to, I think that was my very first 90 seconds of vintage. Um, but I came across this and I didn't want to pass it up. It's a manila folder and it says right on here, do not lose and these are recipes for Libby. And it says right on there, use any of these for your collage wall. And what these are, are original handwritten recipe, or yeah, recipes from this family, I guess. So this was from Judy Fannin, and it was Jean-Claude something potato dolphins. So you have this little notebook paper and this is so good written in the top clearly this this recipe has been used quite a bit because there's quite a bit of stains um another one from judy fannin uh this is an old-fashioned recipe you know 60s or 70s recipe for marinated plank steak or flank steak uh serves four you've got that written out you've got a printed card for uh horseradish bloody mary's uh, another this is, it says it serves 12 shells. It's better than blank, blank, blank. Okay. Uh, celebration potatoes, kind of written on a long strip of paper, like notebook pa or note paper or something, notepad. Uh, something that was probably cut out of a 
magazine or something, Mendocino Mustard. Although it's blank on the back, so that might have been maybe a promotional piece for that mustard company. Another uh, handwritten, actually, it looks like it's similar to the other one, 12 Shells. Uh, article from a magazine with a recipe. The Ultimate Macaroni and Cheese from Judy Fannin. So a lot of these seem to be coming from the same household. Another handwritten one, but this one's on the back of a Stanley Demos Coach House Restaurant card out of Lexington, Kentucky. That's kind of cool. Um you know, they're just this odd mix of recipes that I think it would be great for a collage wall or junk journal or something like that. There's not a lot of value to these. Um, I did pay a little bit to get them, but I add them as part of a bigger mix. So I didn't pay technically a lot for them. So I'm just going to offer them here. And I'm going to put this, this is the $5 ephemera sale. So you get the entire batch of uh, recipes for $5 by giving me number 71. Um, and it'll be up to you how you want to, how you want me to ship them because some of them have not been folded. So I'll need to use a bigger envelope, which increases the postage. But if you want me to fold them, I can do it lightweight. It's all just paper, but number 71 for five bucks gets you the recipes. And the last series of items I'm going to be showing is actually, uh, these, these showed up. I mentioned earlier, I have the 90 seconds of vintage. These are items that I showed early. Some of my earlier videos on the 90 seconds of vintage, some of the items sold these did not, so I'm sorry, recycling them. Uh, but th not everyone follows the 90 seconds of vintage. It's a relatively new thing. I encourage you to follow the hashtag and watch the videos. They're sometimes they're fun because people you have to cover a lot in 90 seconds and you're trying to sell something at the same time. So it may be not as educational as I would like. I have to re-record them just to I talk too much, um, but I'm, it's, I'm basically selling things through there to get them out quickly. And so sometimes you're gonna get a better deal there than you're gonna get any place else. So these are also $5. Uh, I have two tin types. So we've got the little boy uh, tin type on, on a chair and his little uh, short pants and boots. So you get that tin type you get by giving me letter E. And then the other little boy, I do believe it's a separate little boy, uh, he is kind of on like a more of a outdoorsy. He's kind of got a tree stump that he's sitting on. Uh, nothing on the back. You have either one of these, but they are the metal photographs, the tin types. You could have this little boy for $5 by giving me letter Z. And then I also had a three card de visites that had not sold. So I'm offering those again here. Uh, these all were from Petersburg, Virginia. They all have little back stamps on them. So this one is from the Setzer Photographic Studio of Petersburg, Virginia. Uh, this was this gentleman is uh, in his little our oval cartouche. You can get him by giving me letter L, and he is five dollars. You can also have this gentleman who is not in a cartouche but has quite the schlacked hair onto his head. Uh, he has a different backdrop. It's still Petersburg, Virginia, but this one's Leith's Photograph Gallery, and it's you know lady's hand holding a card and. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's that's kind of like a gilded color uh, print. So it's actually pretty pretty. And the card itself is trimmed in that same gold color. So he is five dollars and you get him by getting giving me a letter N. And the final gentleman is also from Leith Photographers, uh, but also with a different back stamp. So it has a little angelic uh, on the on the camera. But again, Petersburg, Virginia, Leith Photographer. And he almost looks like he's had pink applied to his cheeks. I don't know if that would have been done at the time the photograph was done, because I don't think these were ever colorized. So I think it was done after the fact, but it's just, he's a very sepia tone, but he almost looks like he's got some color in his cheeks. Can't tell so much from the picture, but uh, that gentleman is also $5 and you get him by giving me letter O. So that's what I've got for my drop sale for uh, this evening. So thanks so much for participating in the drop sale. I will be hosting the next one. So be watching for another uh, drop sale shop hop coming to you in April. And until then, follow my channel, follow my Instagram for every all the other great things that I might have available and uh, for sale. So thanks so much for your time. Thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. When that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way.